The use of information and communication technology in the provision of so much uh, solution to human, industrial, as well as other social areas have uh, proven to be successful for many nations and Nigeria definitely should be catching on with the times. After all, we're said to be in a global village. Now, a contemporary challenge to national security, internal security especially, uh, Nigeria is inundated with its own uh, myriad of uh, problems. We've seen issues of the farmers' headers clashes. We've seen harassing in the different, uh, in different parts of the country. We've seen attack on even human lives and also uh, other institutions, whether public or even private. We've seen, though, we, we've witnessed several aspects of the insurgency from the north, east, northwest, north central, and even moving down south. You could actually say the whole country is actually intertwined in the response and the reaction to the different uh, insecurity challenges. Now, what are other nations of the world latching on? The issue of technology has been deployed and is still being in great use. So where, while the government has recently further sought the assistance of uh, foreign nations uh, that are technologically developed to tackle the menace of insecurity, where do we need to push our strength and also our focus with, in the face of the persistence in security that have been claiming lives and property, like we said. Now, leaving destruction certainly in the path. The role of ICT in tackling crime in modern times, as experts are saying, cannot be overemphasized. Our true states uh, claim that the solution to this nation's insecurity, at we, as we see today, will be the deployment of technology. We'll be sharing this uh, insights with our guests today as we rub minds and also prove them their own thoughts on these areas of interest as it concerns security challenges to Nigeria. Welcome to Nigeria Today. My name is Blessing Abu. Yes, joining me on the program, let's uh, first welcome, uh, is joining us via Zoom uh, to look at other areas of uh, fighting insecurity, especially as it grants ICT. I'd like to welcome Dr. Kabir Adamu. Uh, Ramadan Karim to you and thank you for joining us. Uh, Dr. Kabir Adamu is a security risk management expert. Thank you for joining us and Ramadan Karim, like I said. Good evening, um, blessings. Um, good evening, Nigerians. Okay, joining me now in the studio here, I'd like to welcome another security expert. He's a chief executive officer, at DZ Global Safety and Security. Uh, also, it's an organization piloting security and counter terrorism awareness, uh, pro especially programs in school nationwide. Uh, Dominion Ajon, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Okay, let's. Um, Begin with uh, the guest on the on the Zoom connection, Dr. Kabir Adamo. Your take on deploying technology in the fight against the security. Yes, I'm sure you agree with us that uh, we are at a point where we cannot just rely on just the mineral areas of just okay on ground and um, other areas that uh, we've been using in the time past. ICT deployment is key at this point. Absolutely. And in fact, it is the direction that the world is uh, heading towards. Um, several components of technology have been developed um, to support uh, the implementation of various security solutions. Now, in the past, security was looked at more from the domain of physical security, where if you have something you want to protect, uh, an asset, that is the, te um, the technical term, you would deploy uh, physical security in the sense maybe it could be, uh, you know, your house. If you've got, um, you know, any valuable property, including yourself, you build a house and you build a door, you build windows and, and all that. But then with the advancement though in technology, um, it was discovered that technology can also serve a critical purpose in enhancing that protection. So today, uh, in line with that physical security, you will have things like CCTV, you would have um, doors that are automated, and then more recently, you will have artificial intelligence, AI, that is able to combine 
um, the, all of these things together, both the physical and then some aspects of this um, te technology and with some systems to now allow uh, you, know, you to better protect that asset that you want to protect. Now that is at the most basic level, which is human um, security in our individual homes. Now in a like manner, technology can be used to enhance um, security and protection in corporate settings, as well as even at the national level, using a combination of several factors. Um, so currently, the conversation is around convergence. How do we bring this technology and put it together with what we have already as physical security? Now, in the context of Nigeria, um, especially if we look at national security, we are faced with a situation where our soldiers, our troops, and the police are stretched. Their numbers are not enough. And so um, technology would come in very handy, first as a force multiplier to support um, the troops in certain solutions so that the little available human resources that we have will now complement this technology. Um, a good example is in um, unmanned aerial surveillance. Um, intelligence gathering is a key component of any national security program. Uh, it, there are several components of intelligence gathering, but one of them is surveillance. And um, you can use technology in several manners to support the, this, this surveillance aspect. And so if you do that, on the one hand, like I said, it's a force multiplier. Then it's also a solution provider. And then more importantly, in certain instances, it could help in delivering the solutions irrespective of what manner. So yes, um, technology is quite instrumental in today's um, concept of security. Okay. Uh, while I bring in Dominion to share his uh, thoughts in this uh, direction as well, knowing that um, the speed with which uh, technology uh, is aiding um, the insecurity um, or security uh, challenge will definitely uh, be giving us uh, added advantage. I, I, I know the uh, nation definitely should have something that looked at as um, public uh, communications um, network and all of that uh, wh while not trying to divulge whatever it is that is supposed to be classified uh, intelligence here but making use of what uh, uh, Dr. Kabir Abdamo had uh, uh, spelled out in the areas we should go what's, what do you make of what we have presently or what those of you in the sector have uh, seen so far in our, in our charge to actually fight the, this level of insecurity well, thank you very much. Uh, like uh, what Dr. Adamu has just mentioned, he has mentioned a whole lot of things. I would want to say, currently, we are really not employing this to the best. I mean, to the point we ought to at the moment. So, so we are relying more on physical security. And like he rightly mentioned, we lack manpower. So the best thing to do now is to ensure that we begin to employ this technology. Now, like he talked about surveillance. Now, when we're talking about surveillance, we can introduce things like drones. When we bring in drones to begin to eight our surveillance it will help in intelligence gathering it will help us know what is happening where it's happening and how to tackle it so i feel as technology is something that is dynamic so we as nigerians should be able to ask for help if need be from more advanced countries so that they can come to our aid to see how we can you know make do with this uh, okay, gentlemen, um, let's recall one or two instances of uh, where surveillance or uh, uh, the use of uh, CCTV as well as other monitoring gadgets were actually deployed. Let's take, for instance, uh, there was the uh, case of the uh, Boston Marathon, uh, sometimes uh, that was, should be 2012, 2013, and um, it was a marathon at, 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 at a point that were closing fo photo of, uh, foot, um, photographs or, and also the footnote to actually closing to see at the different points where the people who participated actually were picked up and that actually aided. And also there was another one with the London um, underground, the uh, under, uh, substation attack. 
not mind in other areas that we have seen uh, from the, the, the journalists in uh, Turkey and some other areas. I'm just citing some of these uh, examples. Here we have, at the point we'll just get to here, unknown gunmen attacked formation XYZ and um, ABC on the other side without necessarily seeing who these people were and it got close to public institutions without us being able to pick anything. That brings me the, the question now is whatever happened to what is uh, different institutions from uh, NASA and uh, NASDAQ and some other information technology uh, that we have as institution, what exactly uh, they do in this instance or what should they be doing, Dr. Kabir? Thank you, um, Blessin. So one of the key uh, gaps, I would say, of vulnerabilities that we have as a country is the absence of um, digital identity. Um, and that's one of the things that I think this uh, current administration is trying to address when it's um, insisting on uh, the national identification number. You recall when under the Trump administration, they uh, introduced some policies and denied um, Nigeria some visa types, mainly because they felt we didn't have uh, a digital, a national digital identity. Now, um, with the absence of a digital identity, it makes the introduction of technology very, very difficult as a tool for fighting crime. Now, the examples you give, um, usually when you pick up that kind of data, you run that data through um, some form of um, database. Uh, sorry, you pick up the information, you run it through some form of database, and it's that database that would now bring up ma matches. So as an example, if, if, if it's a face that you're looking for, you already have a database. Um, in this instance, it's your nationals that have been registered or uh, foreigners who have come in that have registered as, as foreigners through the visa system. So you run it through, uh, and most times with AI, because of the volume of data involved, it will be impossible for the human mind to, to do that. And, and that's where technology comes in, uh, artificial intelligence as an example. It will help you to run that data through a system, and then when there is a match, I'm sure you've seen it in movies, and um, those who are watching, I think, crime scenes, or there are several movies that where they show this type of technology. Uh, you put it through the system, AI would match the whatever information it is, if it's a face, if it's some, 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 some form of identity, whatever it is, that once there is a match, that match will be picked up and then it will display and it will show you. From there, law enforcement agents continue with their investigation. So I think it's absolutely important that um, this administration continues with uh, that policy of um, you know, national identification so that we have a comprehensive database of who is the Nigerian and more importantly, who are the foreigners within Ni Nigeria. Now, once we have that, that, that database, it would make the introduction of different kinds of technology towards solving crime um, very easy. Um, you know, there are so many aspects, components of this. Uh, sound is an example. Um, facial features, uh, name them, uh, biometric uh, data that you can use run, to run through a database and then using AI, uh, it will help you. Yeah, and then the one that in, in my field, which is industrial security, that is now becoming really very common and popular is what we call open source intelligence. Um, if you go on the internet today, and just to give you an example, you search for your name, you probably get maybe have, have a billion, you know, hits on different things that Blessing has done. So the average human mind cannot process that data. And that is where technology comes in to aid law enforcement. Because with AI, that particular aspect of Blessing that you are looking for, maybe I want to know where your house is. Um, frankly, with, with open source intelligence, I, I can. You don't need to tell me where you live. Uh, if you are on Facebook, which I know you are, if you are on Twitter, on Instagram, um, all I need to do is use open source intelligence and with um, triangulations and algorithms and different um, methods of matching uh, the information, I'll come up with a picture of who Blessing is, where she, what market she goes to, how she does her shopping, who she associates with, and before you know it, I have a picture of who, who blessing is. So that's what the kind of aid that technology would give to, to security, and which unfortunately, over time in Nigeria, we are not um, taking advantage of. 
um, the good thing, and I'm really happy on the one hand, on the other hand, not so happy. And SARS uh, was a wake-up call for uh, a lot of us. Um, the mobilization for NSAS happened in the cyberspace. Uh, a lot of us were caught um, off guard, unawares, and by the time it hit, uh, you know, it was almost uncontrollable. And so I'm hoping, and I've seen that in this budget, um, there is a lot of, uh, you know, effort by the different um, government organs to invest in especially this component of um, security that I mentioned, the open source intelligence, what is called OSINT, OSINT, sorry, O-S-I-I-N-T. Um, so yes, there, there are several components of that, that if we adopt technology, it would definitely help, help us. I know you've given the example of the CCTV, but I didn't want to restrict my response to just that. It's just one component um, of the type of information you can gather and feed through a database. And with AI, that database would help you solve enormous security challenges. So Adamo and uh, uh, Sir Dominion uh, Ajam, when we get back from this break, we'll be taking a look at what are the areas should this technology now falls in the hands of the wrong non-state actors and some other persons who are not supposed to be in custody of such because uh, like you use the issue of the NSAS, uh, several people, uh, in fact, several institutions were actually called uh, NAPI. And um, where we should find the convergence? We'll be talking about this after this break. Welcome back. If you just joined us, the program is uh, Nigeria Today, and we're taking a look at uh, fighting the insecurity through uh, technology that's deploying technology in a fight against uh, insecurity. And my guests are still there. Uh, I have Domino Ajom here in the studio, and I have uh, Dr. Kabir Adamo uh, joining via Zoom. Now, there is, there is a funny saying. Well, it, 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 it seems laughable. But then people can actually say, if, I, if I'm in trouble, let's say we have fire incidents, we have an attack here, what emergency number should we call? In the different languages or the dialects, you get to hear, hey, 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 help, 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 help what? So you need to have somewhere to actually reach out to call. Or you just hear people shouting, where are you, like, by me, all the likes. But then the use of technology will involve also having a connection to a signal or signal to particular lines or um, connecting rooms that could actually give us a prompt response. Uh, gentlemen, I'm sure we'll recall that uh, sometimes in... Um, was it 2018 now? Yes, if I have the figures right. There was the commissioning of the first emergency communication center. I'm sure this also uh, was in line with fighting insecurity and improving the uh, safety of lives and property. I think that particular one was uh, registered in Katsina and um, it was uh, commissioned uh, in a big way. But then the question now would be, we have schools, we have um, other institutions, other public institutions, and people are caught right today in the in the midst of trouble they can't actually reach anywhere is that job for schools because i know this is your own um this is uh, where your expert is too uh, alongside other areas where and how should schools actually deploy the use of this technology to help the students and also to reach out to the larger populace yeah thank you very much i think uh, first and foremost like we did mention the use of uh, cctv cameras earlier on it's very important so that even the school operators themselves will be able to monitor, even from the comfort of their homes, what is happening within the schools. And besides that, you talked about some numbers, relevant numbers. Besides the fact that every state 
has what we call the police control room number. You know, when they reach out to the police control room number, the police will be able to reach out to other security formations if they don't have those numbers directly. But most importantly, it is important for us to have a short code, a toll-free number. I think that's the one that they say 211. 211 that 112. 112, thank you. Mm -hmm. The 112. But the question is, is it really working? You cannot, when in an emergency, you the reason why that must not be a long number is so that you just get it straight and you get help. But the question is, if it is not working, you when you have to spend like 20 minutes trying to get across this, it becomes, you know, it becomes counterproductive. So we should try and make sure if that number is, we should make it workable and it should get down to schools because it's quite short. Now, the, the question again is, the schools, the students, Students, like in boarding schools, you will agree with me that students are not allowed to use handsets, their mm. phones, while they are in boarding schools to prevent some other things, like you will agree with mm. me. Then we should have active security personnel in schools, maybe like a, a, a teacher who is saddled with that responsibility to ensure that as he is in school, his phone is always alive. So that when there is an emergency, that he should be able to get across to the relevant authorities and ensure that he alerts them early enough because they work based on information they receive. If this information is not passed and passed in good time, you know, there will be trouble. Could I have uh, fostered the uh, kind of trouble that the students that we've seen uh, in the last uh, many months um, being kidnapped and all of this one, could they have, uh, uh, have, uh, could they have had that one deployed? But, yeah, definitely. If there is, it will help a whole lot of things. You know, when we're talking about, you know, security in schools, it goes beyond just waiting to be reactive mm. we need to be proactive now when we are proactive you know we put measures in place like i mentioned here sometime you know these people that carry out this attack they don't just carry out this attack they go for pre-surveillance pre-attack surveillance and to survey and be sure that they can do this without hindrances if within the school environment we will equally introduce the kind of surveillance to be able to be proactive and look at any stranger and ensure that if he is within the environment and he's not a member of that community we raise alarm let's if it means such a person being picked and of course being interrogated to know why he is there i mean it will be able to prevent some of these attacks we should not just wait and until when it happens like i did mention last mm. time i gave an instance of uh, the incident that took place in ogun state where children were uh, abducted from ogun state there was an incident where the fence was opened up okay. and when it was opened up it was at night in the morning students saw the hole the opening and they reported back to the authorities and the authorities just were non challenged they looked they just at it and said, yeah, okay. this, mm. uh, you know area boys and they left it so five days later the hoodlums used that as their access to go and cut away so surveillance so and intelligence uh, should actually come to play there very all right very uh, let's quickly get the closing remark from uh, dr kabira down because we must go now yes the point of convergence we've talked about issue of data uh, base which is still uh, having its own lacuna in terms of gathering now uh, classified intelligence is uh, quite uh, important here but then sharing this intelligence and above all not falling into the hands of the non-state actors or the wrong hands it's a vital issue if we must deploy technology at this point what's your take on that Yes, uh, the more we go into, um, you know, the field of um, cyber, the cyberspace, as it were, and the use of technology, unfortunately, the more vulnerable we are to cyber attack. And, I mean, a classic example is the, uh, and the NSAS, sorry, not NSAS, COVID-19 COVID period. As people migrated from physical meetings to virtual meetings, the criminals too turned to the cyberspace where we saw an increase in cyber crime and that has been well documented especially um, attacks on supply channels of uh, the vaccines and other drugs ppes name them that were then being in high demand so it, it's 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 just like you have crime in the physical world that's how you have it in the 
cyberspace. Now, unfortunately, in the cyber world, one key element is that you have the, the open web where you and I operate, and then you have the dark web where, unfortunately, um, a lot of the criminals operate. And uh, not, not there is, as at today, no way really of regulating what happens in the dark web. So like most people say, that's where you can buy virtually everything in, in the dark web. And cryptocurrency has even come in to make it easier to buy. And you can't, you can't really trace the movement of that cryptocurrency. <laughs> now, oh. you, we can also move to the, the um, subject of unmanned okay. aerial vehicles. You are aware that, I don't know if, you've, if you monitored it, but two sitting head of state, assassination of two sitting head of state was attempted with, with the use of drones or manned aerial vehicles. And so how many countries okay, have the capability to man their mm. um, airspace to prevent this type of attacks by unmanned aerial vehicles? So on the one hand, while technology can be very useful, it also has its bad sides, unfortunately. Certainly. I'm afraid that's the much time will permit us on the program today. We thank our guests. We'd like to appreciate you, Dr. Kabira Damo, Security Risk Management Analyst, for your insights on the program today. Thank you for having me, and stay safe. Stay safe, too. i also like to appreciate you, Minio Majob, Security Analyst, uh, for your insights. Always a pleasure having both of you on set. Thanks for mm -hmm. having me. And we appreciate you, our viewer, for always keeping a date with us on the program. Nigeria Today is weekdays at 7.30 in the evening. You can watch this edition as well as other editions online at uh, youtube.com forward slash NTNews24Hub. Thank you for watching. My name is Blessing Abu.